Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is your first Spanish language network interview. I thank you. Well, I think it could very well be, come to think of it. But Finally. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, you just launched your reelection campaign in front of 20,000 people in Florida. It's going to be a tough fight. I don't think so. I mean, we're, we're winning everywhere that we see. We see a lot of fake polls put out by people that uh, put the same polls out four years ago. Uh, I think that uh, when you look at the enthusiasm in Orlando last night, you look at Florida, you look at what's going on. We had at least 20,000 in that arena last night, and we sent away thousands and thousands. We had 120,000 requests. Now, I think we're doing great. I think we're doing really well in Florida and Ohio, Pennsylvania. I think we're doing very well. Uh, I won Pennsylvania last time, first one to win as a Republican in many years. Uh, and we brought back a lot of business. Pennsylvania's having the best year they've ever had as a state. Michigan's having the best year they've ever had as a state. I don't know. I mean, I should do well. You have also been very tough on immigrants. Um, and just this week, the, the tweet... When you the, say that, you mean illegal immigrants. Immigrants who cross... Because I've been very good to immigrants, but illegal immigrants. immigrants who cross right. the border, including those who come asking for asylum, for example. Right. Uh, this tweet that you did this week. Next week, ICE will begin the process of removing the millions of illegal aliens who have illicitly found their way into the United right. States. Right. And, you know, many of them are from China. Many of them are from other parts of the world that you wouldn't even believe. But and our laws are so bad. Congress has done nothing about our laws and fixing our immigration laws. They're so bad. The asylum laws are laughed at by everybody in the world that knows anything about I want to talk to you it. about the immigrants themselves. Go ahead. You've been very tough on them. Uh, one of the things that you did was... And you know my poll numbers with Hispanics? Went up 17 points. Well... Okay, explain that. I've been tough. You've been and yet tough, my poll but, numbers with Hispanics have gone way up. But the fact is that there is a percentage of Latin Latinos that vote of that no doubt there is up to 30% of the Latino population who has supported you among the voters. Well, right now, that I'm would at make 50%. it 70%. Well, right now, I'm at 50. Don't. But let's talk about the immigrants. I know, but you, for a Republican, I'm at 50%. I went up 70 points. You know why? The Hispanics. I have not seen any poll that says, well, we'll with show all it due to respect, you. that you we'll have 50% of the Latino support. No, no, we'll Latino show it to you. But let me tell you, we went up 17 points. You saw that. I went up 17 points because I'm tough at the border because the Hispanics want toughness at the border. They don't want people coming and taking their jobs. They don't want criminals to come because they understand the border understand better that. than anybody. So, the zero tolerance policy, was it a mistake? It's not a mistake. We want to have strong borders. It's not a mistake. Zero but tolerance let me just is explain separation something. of okay. children sure. from parents No, no, no. let border. me explain. Thousands we and had thousands separation. of children separated. When I became president, President Obama had a separation policy. I didn't have it. He had it. I brought the families together. I'm the one that put them together. Now, I said something when I did that. Watch, many more people will come up, and that's what happened. But President Obama is the one that built those prison cells. I understand. 2,800 2, children were reunited with their parents in the last year. We don't even know. The government doesn't even know how many children are still not with their parents. They don't know, okay. which I find incredible. Ready? My question are you ready? Is, under the Obama plan... Sir, we're talking about we had, no, your plan. I'm, no, we're not, because I'm the one that put people together. Okay. I just, I, they separated. I put them together. You did not... 2,800 children were reunited with their parents in this last year after the zero tolerance me, policy. Because I put them together. Of them. That's because I put them together. Under Obama, you had separation. Under a court order, I mean, right? No, I put them together. I'm the one that, that changed the plan. I inherited separation. And I changed the plan, and I brought people together. Now, when I did that, I said, watch what happens. More people are going to come up. Because when you put the parents together with the children, when you don't separate, and that's exactly what happened. But I hated to have the separation policy. And the was prisons mistake, that you then? saw, they was called it, them was prisons. Was zero tolerance a mistake? Uh, all I, what zero tolerance means to me is we're going to be tough on the border. That includes separating parents from children, no, if that's no, what it takes? No, I put them together. Okay. Just remember that. The, I put them together. The, another thing, Mr. President, you said, uh, I remember clearly you said, you spoke directly to the Dreamers. You said, the Dreamers will be treated with heart. And the Democrats don't do that. What happened to that heart? The Democrats don't want to do make a deal? The first thing you do is you try to, you uh, essentially turn back DACA as an executive yeah. order. Ready? Yes. The Democrats don't want to make a deal. It's not an executive order. You know, we're in the Supreme Court right now. We're be going to be before yes. the United States Supreme Court soon. And the judges, the justices are going to make a decision. I would have made a decision earlier than that. I can't get Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer 
to do anything for the dreamers. They will do nothing for the dreamers. They don't care about the dreamers. You revoked DACA. Let me tell you what I did. I revoked it because everybody said that Obama had no right to do it. But I didn't revoke it quickly. I said, let's make a deal. They were unable to make a deal. So now it's sitting before the United States Supreme Court. I am willing to do something with the dreamers, as you call it. DACA, by the way, they're different meanings. When you say dreamers and DACA, they're really a different. But let's, for purposes of this, let's call it the same thing. Call them the dreamers. But that's very much different than DACA. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. uh, I am willing to make a deal. I always have been. But Pelosi and Schumer don't want to make a deal. They don't want to make a deal. You also revoked TPS for 200,000 Salvadorans, Haitians, uh, Sudan, and Nicaraguans. We are doing These are something. people who registered, who that's participate, right. no, well, they, who work no, here. And, and their time came up, and now somebody has to make a decision as to whether or not they're going to stay in the country. And I haven't made that decision yet, but we're going to take a look at it. By the way, somebody has to make that decision. You know, they're supposed to leave Do you when have something against immigrants? Uh, I love immigrants. I love immigrants. Uh, this country is based on immigrants. Our country is based on immigrants, and without it, and in fact, I'll tell you, I want people to come in. I have brought so much industry into the country. We have 17 car plants under construction. We have Foxconn coming in to Wisconsin. We have all these massive companies. You know, we're doing incredibly well. 3.5% unemployment. By the way, lowest Hispanic unemployment rate in the history of our country, right. lowest Asian, lowest African-American also. But we have the lowest Hispanic unemployment rate in the history of our country. Hispanics today are, have the average net wealth, the wealthiest they've ever been under Trump, not under Obama, because under Obama, they were going the wrong way. Let's talk about uh, another subject that is very uh, recently uh, dealt with, Mexico. Do you consider Mexico an ally, or an adversary, a friend, or a foe? Well, this week, I consider them a friend. <laughs> they've been doing a great job, actually. They, uh, we signed an agreement last week they have 6,000 people going to their southern border, uh, troops, and they are doing a really good job. I mean, so far, they've been doing a real Is good job. Is this a week-by-week metric week, uh, Well, I have to see how they do. Look, they can easily stop, if they want to, they can easily stop this tremendous uh, migration to the United States. And then we have all these uh, the illegals coming in. It's no good. Mexico has been great for the last week and a half. Now, I signed the agreement a week and a half ago. But they've been great. They've honored the agreement. They've been, if they weren't great, I would put tariffs on Do you on plan them. to meet with President Lopez Obrador? Yeah, I would. I like him. I do. I like him. You like him. Yeah. After this agreement, which I think everybody says you won the negotiations with Mexico. I don't think I won it. I think oh, Mexico certainly. won too. No, no. Mexico didn't need millions of people pouring through the middle of their country, okay? I think we both won. But they have a migration policy, which may be different than, Maybe it's than the different, United States. But they have very strong immigration laws. Okay. We don't. They will stop them, and they can stop them before they ever get to so the border. So is Mexico now doing the United States bidding in the southern border? So far, have? it looks like I mean, Mexico is, it... is doing a great job for Mexico and for the United States. So far. But it's only a week and a half. So you don't think, I mean, are you asking Mexico, in effect, to patrol the southern border to do the American, the U.S. dirty work? In, no, no, in no, the no, no, to, no. To, to not no. let... Not the U.S. dirty work, to do Mexico's work. People shouldn't be allowed to walk through Mexico into our country. They're not supposed to be in Mexico either. So Mexico is removing those people and they're bringing them back to Honduras and, and different places, Guatemala, uh, El Salvador. They're bringing them back. And so far they've been doing great. And that's why I'm not doing tariffs. Otherwise I would do tariffs. And I don't want to do tariffs to Mexico, but it would be tremendously costly for me. I don't even know if it would be affordable for Mexico. And next week are the uh, first Democratic uh, right. Debates. Right. Ten for two nights. By the way, I invite you to watch it on Telemundo. Uh, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, who would you prefer as an adversary? I really, you know, I, I, I've been asked that question. Honestly, you never know. You never know. Uh, I could comment on different ones, but I won't bother too much. I think uh, well, just a little bit. Maybe, Bernie. Bernie yeah. looks uh, like he's had it. Uh, Bernie looks crazy, but he always did. But he looks like a tired crazy right now. And. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, he looks like he's just exhausted. I don't know what happened to him, but he is exhausted. And he doesn't do any work. He's not working. One thing I found out about this job, to do it right, and I've done it right, you have to work hard. No president in two and a half years has ever done what we've done in terms of tax cuts, in terms of regulation, in terms of Second Amendment, in terms of so many different things. 
there's never been anything like it. And that's okay. You know what we've done with the vets with choice. They couldn't get choice. They couldn't get accountability. Mm -hmm. And we got these things passed that haven't been passed for 45 years. The Quinnipiac poll out in Florida says that uh, Sanders, uh, Biden, Warren, Buttigieg right now would beat you. I know, but Buttigieg, you, do you believe that, really? Do you believe it? They also had me losing Texas to Pocahontas. Uh, I'm not losing Texas to anybody. Uh, we have a tremendous lead in Texas. We have a tremendous lead in Florida. Uh, Quinnipiac, I don't respect that poll. They've been calling me wrong for a long time. I mean, they've been calling me terribly wrong. And uh, now I will say I have a good poll with Rasmussen where I'm at 51%. And you have to understand, I'm at 51%, but I've been hit for two and a half years since I became president by the fake news and by this nonsense with the Mueller report where I win the Mueller report and now they want to do a do-over. You know, they want to do it again. Let's do it again. It was no good. Didn't turn out good for them. So they said, let's do it again. But as you know, and, and you will admit, for two and a half years, they've been doing nothing but hitting me. And I still, I'm at 51%. And I'm winning most of the states that we poll, where we have actual real pollers. Most of the said not Democratic inclined pollers or polls that were bad last time. You know, when I look at some of the polls from my race against crooked Hillary Clinton, okay? And I look at those polls, they were just like this. They were worse, far worse. I was going to lose to her a week before the election, according to the Washington Post ABC. I was going to lose by at least 12 to 14 points. And then we sent a letter of complaint. And the next week, they changed the poll. That was the day of the election. They changed the poll. And it was like even. I said, how do we go from 12 or 14 points? We sent a legal letter to him, and we were even. And then we won the election. Do you, is it something that you're basing on your gut, on the polling, internal polling? What do you base this on? Well, I base it on a lot of things. I base it on crowd enthusiasm. Look at the crowd last night. That arena's got to have 20,000 seats. It was packed. We sent away thousands of people, many thousands. But we had 120,000 requests. We were telling people, please don't come. Now, when Biden goes out, as an example, he can't get 100 people to fill a little tiny gymnasium. They end up doing a roundtable because it looks so bad. They do a roundtable. He walks in, they end up on a roundtable. Um, I think we're doing great. Are you, are you looking for the Latino uh, vote? I mean, yeah. we're the largest uh, minority yes. in the country. Absolutely. And I did well in it last time, and surprisingly, and I think I'm going to do much better this time. Why do you think that? Uh, because I've been very tough on Cuba. I love the Cuban people from Miami and elsewhere. Uh, I've been very, very tough on Cuba. Nobody's been like me on Cuba. And we're going to get Cuba worked out properly, not the way Obama did it, which was a disaster, which I revoked. But we're going to get Cuba taken care of. Venezuela, who's going to be tougher than than I am what's on happening Venezuela with Maduro. You, you, well, uh, you're going to see what's happening. Juan Guaido, uh, in February, you nice said democracy is on the guy. rise, yeah, we'll and see. yet nothing's changed. Well, it's a process, OK? I mean, it's a process. It's terrible, Venezuela, where people are starving. This was one of the wealthiest countries, and now people are starving. They have no water. They have no nothing. We've been very, very tough. Some people say we've been too tough. I say we haven't been tough enough. And I love the Venezuelan people. We're sitting in Doral. This is called Venezuela, little Venezuela, this area. It's the best area. If a house is for sale around Doral, if it doesn't sell within a week, they say there's something wrong. Okay, this is a very successful area. The people of Venezuela are great people, but they've been decimated by these two characters that have been so horrible over the years. Are you visiting, are you planning to visit any Latin American countries soon? I will. I just, uh, as you know, I have a very good relationship in Argentina. We have a very good relationship in Colombia uh, with the new president uh, who's doing, I hear, a very good job. Uh, I would like to say we're going to soon have a very good relationship with the people in Venezuela. We have to help those people. Those people, are they're starving. They have no water. It's run by a dictator. It's a horrible thing going on. In, if you look at what's going on in Venezuela, it's horrible. And, and you know who's causing the problem? Largely, Cuba. They've got 25,000 troops, and Cuba does. And we're putting sanctions on Cuba, and I just stopped the cruise ships from going to Cuba. And Cuba's got to straighten out. And I will tell you, I don't even know politically, is that good or bad? Mm -hmm. But the people in Miami, they gave me the Bay of Pigs Award just before the election because they love the job I'm doing with respect to Cuba. Back the to Cubans the gave me the Bay of Pigs Award. Did you know that? I did. The, <laughs> back to uh, the situation on the economy, and you did uh, bring out the headlines of what unemployment is uh, among the different communities there are. However, in those communities, people that don't see, for, exa for example, standards of living, 
yeah. going up. Uh, Senator Sanders and others say it's time to have a national $15 an hour minimum wage. Is it time to do that? Well, I've already created a minimum wage because wages have gone up more than anybody in many decades right now. But you know, about wages, $15 excuse an me, hour? Excuse me. Wages have gone up more than 3%. It's more than the number. The people that I'm dealing with and the people that, and, and if you look at the reports, that's a very low number, the $15. And I am actually looking at that. But you I'm are. You're looking at the possibility. I am, I am looking at that. I will say this. But beyond that, because that's just an artificial number, much more importantly, because I'd like to get people higher than that, wages have gone up tremendously in the United States since I've taken over. In fact, soon to be record numbers. So I have to wrap it up, but I have a few more questions, if you'd be so kind, Go sir. Ahead. What would you say, like, just thinking out loud, are the two biggest mistakes you've made as president? Well, a, a couple of appointments. I would have not appointed a couple of people, and uh, my life would have been a much simpler life, uh, so I could say that. But without getting personal, I'll, I'll hold that for a later date. Uh, you can do it now. The I biggest, don't have a problem. No, no, I know, I know. I appreciate that. Uh, I think my biggest mistakes was I put a couple of people in that uh, I shouldn't have put in. Any regrets? I have no regrets. You know, I've done a great job. I've done more than any president in the history of our country in the first two and a half years. I've gotten, I've taken care of our vets. I've taken care of our military. We've rebuilt our military. This year will be the final year. We are rebuilding our tanks, our planes. Our, you had to see, we had planes that didn't fly. We had planes where they had to go to the desert. They call it the graveyard to get parts. Uh, you take a look at what I've done with Right to Try. Take a look at what I've done with Choice for the vets. Take a look at all of the things and accountability for the vets. Nobody's ever, ever thought it was possible to get veterans choice. That's where veterans, if they have to wait, can go out and see a yes. doctor. In one word, how would you define your presidency? Well, you, you can't do it in one word. I mean, I can give you a nice, beautiful word. I can talk about, I can say excellence, okay? Excellence, and then I leave the interview. But you can't do it in one word. Look, I've worked hard. Uh, I've been battling a deep state that is disgraceful, uh, phony, uh, phony allegations, and uh, the other side is guilty. I mean, actually, when the other side is guilty, and despite the whole witch hunt thing, which is now coming to an end, the Mueller report turned out really good. Of course, they don't accept it still. You know, they want to keep going because they have nothing else to do. And that's the problem. The Democrats are not getting anything done in Congress, and it's very bad. They have an opportunity to do drug price lowering. They have an opportunity to do infrastructure, so many different things. They have an opportunity to solve the problem on the border, because we wouldn't need Mexico if they do a couple of things with loopholes and with asylum. But I do respect Mexico, and I want to thank the president and everybody, because it's only a week and a half, but there's been a tremendous difference on the border. It's going to be a tough race. Uh, what does the first lady tell you about uh, running for re-election? Well, she was fine with it. She's been a great first lady. They really like her. They really like Melania. You have to see, last night you saw that she walked out, she got a tremendous hand, and uh, the people like Melania. She's, she's a very good person. She's worked very hard in the opioid problem. That's something that she really took to heart. And we've knocked it down about 17% in a year and a half. We've knocked it down by being very tough on doctors and medical. It, going back to the, the, the Latino vote, uh, granted, a percentage definitely supports you, but there are some who fear, who fear your rhetoric, who fear uh, what's been going on in the border, who fear that you have said that you will be deporting millions of people. They want me to do it. They're here they, illegally. Mr. President, they do not. They do. They do You not. ready? They don't want to lose their jobs. They want to keep their salaries, their wages up, and they don't want crime. When people come through, you have MS-13 coming through. But Hispanics, that's not the majority, Mr. President. Hispanic, Mr. President. But it's a lot of people. It, it may be some. To, if it was it one in a hundred, it's The too mothers many. that are coming with their children aren't MS-13. But if it's the one in a hundred. The people who are raped in, in their town and have right, to leave aren't MS-13. I agree. But if it's one in a hundred, it's too many. And we're taking them out of our country by the thousands. And the Hispanics see that their communities, that, that these people, these, these horrible people, MS-13 and other gang members, are being removed from our country. Those people are the first ones that want the MS-13 removed. But they do they not do. want to see families separated at the border. They don't want to see but people's I don't, rights. I don't they don't want to see children in cages. Ready? Obama built the cages. I didn't build them. Obama built the cages. That's number one. Obama separated. I'm the one that did a presidential order bringing the parents together. Mr. It's President, a big misnomer. we've talked about so many subjects, right? I mean, uh, immigration, we've talked about uh, foreign affairs, we've talked about the economy. Do you sleep well? Uh, I don't have much time to sleep. Fortunately, I've never been a big sleeper in terms of hours, but I sleep fine. I mean, I sleep very good. 
Mr. President, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Visiblemente cansado y vistiendo un overall